good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us here. I thought recording this uh, conversation might be useful for others who weren't able to join in case they have the same questions as you guys. So um, let me introduce our uh, uh, speaker here today. Uh, Greg is uh, the lead developer advocate from Hedera, and he'll be here to answer your questions. Uh, he's, uh, he comes with a lot of experience uh, in software development and also has worked with Hedera for a while now and knows it in and out enough to answer all your questions here. So whatever questions you have with respect to, the, to your projects, with respect to using Hedera or even in terms of um, you know, conceptualizing something, uh, uh, your project, and um, um, you know, even with respect to the hackathon, whatever it is, you can share your questions in the Q and A. In case you want to speak, you can raise your hand or uh, request so on the chat, and we will give you a chance to speak. Uh, so um, to begin with, uh, I have uh, Nikhil from my team and. Um, uh, Nickel from my team here with me. And uh, we also got a couple of questions from you guys with respect to um, the hackathon. And so we'd like to answer them. So one of it was, um, what, what is the meaning of the no blockchain use case email that I got? So um, some of you basically uh, had a uh, um, provided us with ideas, submitted ideas that were really good, but didn't specify how you um, uh, are going to basically use Hedera. So it would be great if you could reach out to us and let us know how you're going to do that if you got that email and then go forward building your idea. So uh, technically you are still in the running, but let's say you uh, submit a project that doesn't have this uh, aspect that is is not integrated with Hedera, you will not qualify to win any of the prizes, no matter how good your project is. So uh, it goes without saying that um, uh, you guys would need to do that. Um, Nikhil, uh, do you want to uh, take over the questions? Now? Hey, everyone. Yeah, hi. Hey, yeah. everyone. Good evening. Good evening, Greg. Uh, hi, Nikhil. Thank you all for joining. Uh, so we have a couple of questions uh, on the dev sides as well. So this is a very common question that a lot of people have asked is that do I have to pay Hedera or do I have to make a payment uh, to build my project on the platform or will Hedera provide me with uh, test tokens or test net? And if yes, how to access them? Greg, if you would take this question up. Yeah, sure thing. So let me, um, oh, can you enable uh, screen sharing please? So I can. Sure, sure, sure. I can share my screen. You should be able to share it now. Yeah, great stuff. Thank you. So um, I thought uh, this may be easier than um, than posting in the in the chat message for the for the recording. Um, so um, to and and hi everybody and thanks for joining us uh, this late in the afternoon on a on a Friday. Um, so um, yeah, to uh, to create or to to test your project or to build your project, you, you do not need to to buy HBAR from uh, from the platform. Uh, you can create a, an account on what we call the test net, which is a test network, uh, which is similar to mainnet, which is the production network. Um, so anything that you do on test net will work on mainnet ultimately if you if you decide to deploy there. Um, but on testnet, you don't need to buy HBAR. You can create an account here by registering. Uh, this will create you <clears throat> an account ID on Hedera, will provide you with a private and public key that you can use in your project and will seed your account with 10,000 HBAR uh, to, to pay for your, your transactions. And this is all free. Um, and every 24 hours, we top up your account up to 10,000 HBAR again. So if you're using a lot of HBAR during your, your testing or your development, uh, don't worry, we will automatically um, you know, bring your balance back up to 10,000 uh, every 24 hours. Um, the top up only applies to the account that, that is associated with your profile. Uh, so you may, uh, in the course of your development, you may create accounts using the software development kits those accounts that you create um, are not associated with uh, a portal profile, so they will not get topped up. Um, so, um, you know, if you need to increase their balance, then, you know, take HBAR from your, 
um, your portal related uh, account. And again, you can use the SDK to transfer HBAR from this account to any accounts that, that you create. Um, so yeah, so that uh, that should enable you to, well, that should answer the first question. Um, there was, uh, in the non-technical questions, there was also uh, something about uh, Discord. Yeah. Um, so to join the Discord, the Hedera Discord, uh, you can go to hedera.com. Um, and if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you feel free to read everything if you want to. Uh, but if you, if you scroll all the way to the, button, to the bottom, there's a button here, which is a Discord icon. And this will take you to uh, HTTPS uh, forward slash or hedera.com slash discord and from there uh, you'll be able to um, join I mean this has launched my my discord app in the background here uh, but you will be able to join our discord um, and in the discord there are uh, channels for uh, discussing some of the the services consensus token smart contract and so on um, and there is a, a specific hackathon channel for, for this particular hackathon where you can ask questions related to, to the hackathon itself. Um, if you have more general questions, it's probably best post them in, uh, in DevTalk here in one of those channels uh, where you will get uh, you know, either myself or some of the developers not related to the hackathon who are working on Hedera uh, who are able to, uh, to answer your question, your technical question. Uh, so that's how to get to Discord. Um, and then the, so the next question, oh, let me close this. So uh, Greg, we, I have yeah. a follow-up question, which is also uh, related to what we just discussed about the testnet, is that mm -hmm. uh, some people are having problems with setting up uh, the testnet. So is there kind of a guide or video uh, video aid for some people to understand sure, how so to set up the testnet? Yeah. Or if so you can if do you it like there, if it's possible. Yeah, I, so uh, so the first the first thing I would point you to is docs.hedera.com, uh, which is our documentation for um, for Hedera and uh, the software development kits. Uh, and there's a section here on getting started, uh, explains how to get uh, testnet access, uh, choose the the language that you want to use, um, how to set up your environment. Uh, so this talks about creating a, an env file and and so on and so forth. Uh, but we can um, we can do this from scratch if you want, um, and and this will be recorded. So uh, let me uh, bring up a development environment, and we're going to use um, we're going to use. Uh, so let let me start. A, I'll, I'll start a new Java project because. Um, Actually, uh, yeah, I'll start a new Java project, but uh, it will be very similar in, in JavaScript. Um, so we'll do a Gradle project and we'll put this in uh, Lumos, we'll call it Lumos Labs. So this has created me um, a brand new project uh, using Gradle. Um, and the first thing, so the first thing I need to do, I'm going to copy this from a, an existing project uh, is to add some dependencies. So I will uh, take those dependencies. This is all documented um, in, in the SDKs. Um, so uh, yeah, so you can refer back to that. Um, and here I'm choosing the SDK version 2.1.0. Um, if you go to the Maven repository uh, or the uh, NPM repository uh, or registry, you can find the, the latest version for, for those SDKs. So having um, sort of built or um, set up my, uh, my Gradle here, I can import the, the dependencies. There we are. Um, and now I'm going to create um, a new file called Dot env, and this is where you set up your um, your account details. So uh, let me uh, uh, where is it? Maybe I made it too small. Uh, 
Right, there we go. We'll take this and we'll put it in there. So what, what I'm trying to do is to not make it so large that you can see my keys fully, uh, but uh, you'll need to set up uh, this ENV file with the operator ID that you will find on the portal once you uh, set up your profile and got your testnet account. Uh, your operator key, that will be your private key. And then you set, you set up uh, Hedera network equals testnet. So I've, I've made this small on purpose so you can't see the rest of my private key. You, you should never share your private key with uh, members of the public. Um, and then we're going to um, just create a, a new uh, class here, uh, test class. Um, and uh, again, I'm going to copy some code um, that I've got here. Oh, sorry, we'll put it there. Uh, let me rename this to uh, test class. Um, I'll remove all of those, I'll remove all of that. Uh, okay, so um, need to resolve some of some imports here. I guess that will probably work. No, it doesn't work. Uh, hold on. <laughs> uh, Java util objects. Try the detail objects. Um, now, in the SDKs in um, uh, in our GitHub, if I just switch quickly to our GitHub uh, repository, uh, GitHub.com/slash hashgraph. Uh, you can find our Go SDK, you can find our JavaScript SDK and our Java SDK, uh, which is what we're using here. And each in each of the SDKs, there is an examples folder um, where you can find uh, some, some ready-made examples that you can use um, that, uh, that should, you know, that uh, will show you how to, how to do things. Um, so uh, I'm not sure why this is not right. Okay, so that's sorted. Uh, test class, we're getting there. Um, now, let me uncomment some of those things. That's because I was using an older version of the SDK earlier. Um, so all those things should eventually import properly. Uh, there we go. So um, now we're set up. So what we're doing here is we're using uh, this um, uh, this dependency dot env uh, to read the operator ID, the operator key and the network from our dot env file. And that sets up an operator ID, which is our account ID, an operator key. Um, and here we're uh, setting up a client for the, the network in question. So in this case, testnet. Um, and we're setting the operator uh, to be the operator ID and key. So uh, this, uh, this account ID and key will now be used in, in our transactions uh, to, to sign and pay for the transactions. Um, so here I'm building a transfer transaction and I'm going to transfer from um, my account, uh, one tiny bar, and this is neg negated to make it uh, a negative number, but I can, I can do this as well. Um, and I'm going to transfer to another account ID. Uh, I'm going to pick three, which is one of the nodes. Um, and I'm going to transfer a positive amount to this account. So we're going minus one from my account, plus one to this account. And then we execute the transaction using the client. And this will automatically uh, sign the transaction using my operator key. Um, and then once we've done this, we get a receipt for the transaction. So this will send the transaction to a node. 
The transaction will eventually reach consensus in a few seconds. And then separately, we then get a receipt for the transaction uh, to determine whether the, the transaction was, was successful or not. Uh, and then we output the status. So let's try and run this. There we are. So these are just warning messages that appear because um, a receipt can take a, a few seconds to arrive, three to five seconds. Uh, so that we're just retrying here until we, we get a, a valid status. And you can see the, the receipt uh, status was success. So this, uh, this transaction worked. Um, so that's just you know, a very, very brief example for setting up a project from scratch. Um, I can try and do this in JavaScript if you want, um, unless we want to move on to another question. Actually, we have a connected question only that uh, are we supporting only the languages that have been mentioned in the documentation, that is JavaScript, Java, and Go, or is there uh, support for any other languages? So there is another uh, there is another SDK in .NET, which is um, managed by um, a community member, uh, but you can find a .NET SDK here uh, if you're a .NET developer. And there is also, I don't have it to hand, uh, but there is a um, Python uh, wrapper for the Java SDK, uh, which again, somebody from the community has written. Um, if you're a Python developer, uh, just uh, just mention it in the uh, in the Discord, and I'll uh, I'll find the uh, the, the Python uh, SDK uh, wrapper for you. Although I'll probably, okay. I can Google search. Python I hope this SDK. answered the question of Rahul Prajapati that uh, he was asking actually how to set up in Python. I think uh, this answers the question how you can use the Python SDK for your project. Yes. Um, so, uh, to, to do, to do. Yeah, I, I'll uh, I'll find the exact link and I'll I'll put it in uh, in Discord. Sure. Also, uh, to all the members who have joined in, uh, we will be posting the recording of this office hour uh, meetup with uh, on the Discord as well as Telegram channels. So, if you are seeing this after the meetup, you I hope you get all your questions answered. If not, you can ask your questions on Discord. Uh, Greg and our team will try to answer your questions as soon as possible. Uh, Susie, we can move on to the next set of questions, I guess. Um, sure thing. So um, the next question uh, is, a, is a hackathon related question. How to submit the project on the Metal platform? So that's pretty simple. You can head over to the um, Hedera Hackathon website and basically uh, sign in uh, through the register now button. That would lead you to the Hackathon platform that we're using. And uh, over there, uh, you basically need to uh, submit your GitHub repository uh, along with a demo video and uh, if there is any additional information you have about uh, your project, you can add that too. So it's very simple. Uh, just make sure, uh, I mean, the links to these uh, details would be uh, the best. And yeah, so, so that's basically it with respect to that. And um, we've got another question here saying, uh, you did not, uh, someone did not receive any updates uh, for the hackathon. So um, uh, the best way to uh, receive update, updates, for example, we did have this office hours organized and before this we had a meetup. So we have quite a few engagement activities like this lined up for you guys. So to make sure that you uh, receive information about this, you can join the Telegram channel or the Discord server or even check your emails because we got you covered on all three platforms. Um, otherwise, in case you are still not receiving it, um, you can leave a message in the chat or get in touch with us separately. Um, we, we leave our contact details uh, on the chat as well. Uh, besides this, we have two more dev related questions. Nikhil, do you want to take that? Okay. Uh, so we that's not a dev related question per se. Uh, just let me 
I guess uh, that was the last question on uh, how to set up the test net and the support for Python SDK, because that was a pretty common question that I got from uh, almost all of the platforms. I even received a few DMs about uh, whether uh, Hedera supports Python. So Greg just answered the question for us. He has also put out the link for the same in the chat. Uh, this link will be put out later on on the Discord as well as the Telegram channels after this uh, after this meetup. Also, uh, for all the participants who are here as attendees, if you have your, any questions, uh, you can simply raise your hand or put out your questions in the Q&A section so that uh, Greg can answer them for you. I've uh, just put the uh, Python SDK link in the Discord. Yes, great. Hey Greg, uh, this is kind of a personal question uh, yeah. that I actually was curious about the Hedera platform and uh, this is something that I wanted to ask. So uh, we have come, like conducted multiple hackathons and events in the past with Hedera. So what are some of your favorite projects that you've seen built on Hedera on the different kind of tracks that we are uh, working on like entertainment and finance and uh, sustainability and all of those? Uh, that's a great question. It it's it's hard to tell really because uh, it, in to to a certain extent it's like asking somebody to name their favorite child. Uh, <laughs> all of the projects are are generally you know pretty awesome. Um, in, in terms of sustainability, um, the 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 two main ones that I'm aware of um, are uh, Dovu, uh, which um, is um, it's sort of working to help um, make sure that um, when farmers uh, use their land as a uh, means to capture carbon, um, then the, you know, the, the checks and balances for verifying that uh, the farmer is doing uh, the right thing, that you know, he's not cheating because there is a, a lot of cheating in this uh, emerging carbon economy. Mm -hmm. um, and making sure that he's, you know, rewarded uh, according to the carbon that is being captured in in the land that he's reserving for this. Um, so this is uh, this is a very, uh, you know, a very interesting project to to yeah. try and put, you know, proper checks and balances on uh, on what is going on there. Um, and the the other one I can think of is is one that we actually spearheaded, um, and there is um, in our GitHub. Uh, we've uh, we've open sourced uh, what we call a guardian uh, for uh, in order to create a carbon economy. Uh, so this here, um, and uh, what uh, what this is all about uh, is basically making sure that um, so you 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 typically have two sides to a, a carbon economy. You have producers of green electricity, and you have uh, consumers of uh, maybe you know fossil fuel energy or coal-based electricity or, or otherwise, who would like to offset their carbon emissions uh, from uh, from the the, the green uh, energy producers. Um, so what the Guardian does is it first uh, ensures that there is full traceability of the production of green energy. Uh, so for example, um, if you install solar panels on your on your house, uh, on your roof, or in your garden, or in a field, um, how do we know, or how does anyone know that the electricity that you claim is generated by these panels, uh, you know, is is gen genuinely from from those panels? Uh, so we have a, a we can set up a process with this guardian whereby using a decentralized identity, so verifiable credentials, the installer of the panels. Uh, has a verifiable credential, which means that uh, maybe um, you know uh, an energy uh, producing entity or a government uh, has given them uh, a seal of approval uh, and has signed a, a credential uh, that verifies that this installer is accredited, is you know a genuine 
installer and not a cowboy, that he does everything, you know, he or she does everything by the rules. Um, when they install the panels, um, the inverter that generates the electricity from the panels also has a verifiable credential, which is uh, signed by the installer. So we have a full chain of custody, if you want, uh, whereby you know the installer is verified, the inverter is verified by the installer, so it, it proves that he installed it. And when the inverter generates electricity, uh, it creates um, um, verifiable uh, data using its own verifiable credential um, that ultimately results in the minting of energy green energy tokens. So those tokens, we can basically trace the, the entire provenance you know, from the inverter that, that is verified to the installer that installed it that is verified to the entity that um, approved that, that installer. Um, and then ultimately, when you um, when you buy um, some of these tokens to offset your your carbon emissions, uh, you can be sure that those tokens are genuine uh, carbon uh, or carbon free, um, you know, energy uh, mm -hmm. or come from a carbon free energy uh, resource. Um, mm -hmm. And it also makes sure that um, every so whenever a token is purchased, it's eventually burnt. Um, so we avoid the, uh, and I use the double spend term, term here, uh, you know, fairly loosely. Um, we avoid cases where, and, and they do exist in this, again, emerging carbon economy. Uh, we avoid scenarios where the same green energy is sold three or four times to offset carbon emissions, uh, which really is not solving the problem because, you know, somebody is uh, not really offsetting the carbon emissions if they're you know, using uh, 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 sort of carbon okay. tokens that have already been sold to someone else. Um, so this kind of, you know, tightens up the economy and makes it more uh, more reliable. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we're, we're pretty, pretty proud of, of that work and we've open sourced it uh, so that uh, anybody yeah, this... who wants to, to build on that can, you know, can take it and grow it and, and make it their own. Yeah, this is actually a pretty cool project. And especially useful for something as an emerging economy as India, you know, uh, where yeah, green yeah. energy is something that is being adopted uh, more and more these days. So I think this is something that uh, someone who is a part of this hackathon and someone who wish to, uh, uh, you know, bring change into the society can actually use. And uh, I guess this is one of the most brightest uh, example of Web3 changing how we perceive the new world. Indeed, you know? yeah. Yeah, so there's full documentation there. Um, you know, if you if you search Hedera Guardian, you will see webinars that we've posted and blogs, and you know, so you can uh, you can inform yourself on on this particular one. Um, what were the other ones that you mentioned? The the other uh, tracks? Unless there are questions that we need to answer, I don't know. I can talk all day. So. <laughs> Um, the other two tracks are the entertainment track and um, uh, the finance track. So, if mm -hmm. you for us there. Yeah. So, in in terms of entertainment, it's still kind of early days. I mean, there is uh, you know uh, an awful lot of uh, traditional uh, public uh, ledger projects around um, NFTs because you know they're they're the latest craze. So there are probably um, I think. 50 or so nft creators that are working with three or four nft platforms so we have vxs we or access uh, go mint and uh, plural nft is coming up we also have mint master which was built by a, a team or is run by a team in india as far as i know um so you know all of these are kind of emerging nft marketplaces and there is a lot of activity around nft which is some sort of entertainment. It's also a bit finance because uh, I guess uh, some people are maybe speculating on on the value of those or the future value uh, of those uh, non fungible tokens. Um, some of the other uh, interesting entertainment um, related activities are uh, Galaxy, um, which is um, a social marketplace um for creators by creators and this is all about enabling um you know people to create their own to token 
Um, there's a, you know, there's a, a social media aspect to this and uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, an NBA star or a cricket player, uh, a famous cricket player in India uh, could create their token and use this to, um, you could purchase the token uh, from them in order to get maybe half an hour of face-to-face -face talk with them uh, and, and things such as that. So it's a, it's a platform that's being built really to enable the um, initially uh, stars, but ultimately anybody uh, to essentially create a, a tighter relationship with with their fan base and their uh, or their customers um, through uh, through Galaxy. So uh, that's a, a fairly uh, prominent um, project, uh, notably because it's being uh, set up by uh, Spencer Dinwiddie, who's a, a very famous uh, basketball player uh, in uh, in the American NBA. Um, so uh, that's uh, that's interesting. Um, maybe less. Uh, I think it's sever.org. Um, maybe less in the. Uh, no, it's not sever. Um, uh, um, that's it. Um, sever love. Um, so. Um, I'm not, I don't know if that's really entertainment, but I, I guess to a certain extent, um, this is run by, I forget his name now. Uh, I'm sure there's a quote somewhere. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, um, ah, what's his name? I forget. Oh, Deepak Chopra. Uh, so he's the, um, he's the, the brains behind all of this. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, this is, this is a, you know, a platform for social good. Um, and there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, potent, interesting potential there um, that, uh, that, that is worth looking at. Um, we've uh, someone who's built uh, a proof of concept here for chess uh, on Hashgraph using the Hedera consensus service so that you can play chess with somebody, you know, somebody, somewhere else in the world. Um, and, uh, you know, without even necessarily knowing them, uh, but they can, um, you know, they can play chess with you remotely um, using Hedera's consensus service to ensure that no cheating goes on. Uh, so that's maybe one of the very first games that, um, although it's a proof of concept more than a, a real game, uh, but maybe one of the first games to, uh, to deploy in Hedera. There are a lot of other uh, entertainment related projects which are not public yet. Um, so uh, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll hear more about those in, uh, in the near future, I'm sure. Um, one, uh, uh, so it's H bar to the moon. That's a, a, an interesting, I think I shared it in the uh, original, um, sorry, in the original, um, presentation that we did, um, this lists all of the publicly known projects uh, around different uh, different tracks and, and use cases. So you might be interested in those. Uh, in terms of finance, um, we, we have a project with uh, DLA Piper called TOCO. Um, so if I search for TOCO, DLA Piper. Um, and uh, this is um, about managing uh, assets. Um, so, uh, you know, financial assets as in property, or it could be uh, a painting uh, using uh, the Hedera token service. So they're tokenizing uh, those expensive assets um, in order to make them easier to um, to, to buy and sell. Uh, so the, the big difficulty right now is if you own, if you own or if you're lucky enough to own a very expensive building um, and you want to sell it, finding a buyer for that expensive building can take you know, several months or several, several years. Um, so uh, what they're doing here is they're essentially breaking the building up into tokens or uh, parts of a token. And then anybody can buy a small part of the building as a token um, and ultimately maybe sell it in the future for, for profit. So it's really decentralizing and democratizing access to high-end expensive property from an investment point of view. 
um, and that's uh, yeah, that's quite a, a, an interesting uh, an interesting use case. And there's a, a, a lot of this is happening um, across the board uh, these days. Awesome, awesome. Uh, so we have a question from Mohak. Uh, he's asking, I'm building an FPV car driving games emulator that measures mm -hmm. carbon footprint of the car as they drive and will offer NFTs as rewards. Do you think Guardian right. can be of any help in that? Uh, so, um, so I guess what would be maybe interesting with the Guardian or, or to look at how you could use the Guardian is if the car is uh, petrol based, um, then the car is consuming or uh, generating carbon. And maybe an interesting use case would be that the car is uh, automatically purchasing uh, um, tokens from green energy producers to offset its, uh, its own emissions as it drives. Um, so uh, maybe, you know, every mile or so, uh, you know, you determine whether you, you were driving very fast and burning a lot of carbon or driving economically going downhill. Uh, not using so much carbon, um, and then dependent depending on your you know actual usage in a mile or ten miles or whatever, um, then the car could automatically you know uh, purchase um, uh, offset um, tokens to to offset its carbon emissions. Uh, so that that could be a, an interesting use case. Right. Um, the uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think how that works with uh, electric cars. Um, I guess if the, uh, it's, I mean, chances are with electric cars is that the, the carbon offsetting, if the electricity comes from a cow, coal power station, for example, uh, then the offsetting would happen at the point of charging uh, rather than at the point of use. So it's when you charge your car, if you're using uh, energy that, that is not carbon friendly, uh, then your uh, charger would automatically, you know, offset its uh, carbon emissions uh, by uh, by purchasing uh, green um, or uh, off offset tokens. Uh, but for a petrol car, yeah, that uh, that would be uh, an interesting use case. Uh, okay, so Himanshu has a very interesting question. Unlike blockchain DLP, which requires nodes to have supercomputers. Is it true that anyone with a cell phone can become an anonymous node for the hash graph DLT? Uh, unfortunately not, no. Um, so uh, it is a bit of a misconception that people have because I think, uh, uh, you know, to everybody's credit, Lehman did say that the hash graph algorithm can run on a mobile phone. And this is true. Uh, you, can you could run uh, a hash graph network on uh, a network of mobile phones. Um, but while, and this is because the hash graph algorithm is very uh, energy efficient, and uh, uh, so it, it doesn't require a supercomputer to run it. However, even though it is very efficient, uh, if you are processing thousands of transactions per second, um, one, you need bandwidth on your phone that will sustain, you know, the throughput of the data that's coming through. So you probably need a, a 5G connection on, on your mobile phone. Um, and, you know, a mobile phone, as powerful as it is, uh, may not be capable today of uh, essentially processing consensus for 10,000 transactions per second or 1,000 transactions per second. So the, the reality is you could run a hash graph network using mobile phones, but you would be limited by the phone's uh, capacity in terms of memory and CPU. Uh, to a few transactions per second, probably. Um, so, uh, so Lehman wasn't lying, but you could not run a Hedera mainnet node uh, or consensus node on a mobile phone simply because the the throughput and the the storage requirements are, are far too high for for today's mm -hmm. mobile phones. Maybe in the future, uh, when we have you know mobile phones that are you know, capable of uh, doing what super what supercomputers or desktop computers can do today, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, not now. And of course, battery life might be a bit of an issue if you're maxing your mobile phone. Uh, you may be a node for an hour or two, and then you'll have to recharge it. Right. Uh, 
Um, so Mohak has actually uh, has a follow up for the uh, car question, electric car question. The case with electric car is through the battery cell disperse uh, methane and carbon for petrol. So he he just basically had a, uh, uh, a response to what you just said. So yeah, we have um, we have one more uh, question yeah, actually yeah, yeah. from Pawan. Uh, he is asking, uh, can you please say where I can find the admin key? to create smart contract in Hedera and some information to integrate Hedera with smart contracts with my React web app. Sure. Um, so uh, let me just uh, close this. Uh, so the admin key, so whenever a, a key is mentioned in the in the SDKs, um, you, you choose what that key is. So uh, if I go back to my project here, um, if I go back to my project here, uh, let's say I do uh, transaction response, response equals new create account, account create transaction, or oh, actually let's do uh, contracts create transaction to be in context, set admin key, uh, so this takes a, a, a key. So I could do operator key here, meaning that the admin key for my contract will be my operator key. Uh, but I could also, and this works in all of the SDKs, it's the same. Um, I could also do uh, private key, my contract admin key, uh, private key equals, uh, private key dot generate. So this will create me a new private key and I could use this here. Now I would you know, probably want to uh, print the private key uh, for later use, um, but the you, you decide what that key is. Um, so you either use your operator key or you use a, a new key that you generate um, and then uh, you know, keep that private of course. Uh, so that you can then do admin functions uh, or administration on, on the smart contract. Uh, okay, integrating the smart contract into a React web app. Um, so if we go to uh, github.com hash, hash graph, uh, SDK, so JavaScript SDK examples. I believe you have you have some examples here for creating a simple contract and creating a stateful contract. So if we take the stateful contract, uh, so in JavaScript, uh, this goes about creating the contract. And here we're calling uh, the contract. So we're running a, a query on the contract. So this is a read-only. Uh, function that we're calling called get message. Um, and then uh, here we're executing a transaction. So this is uh, modifying the state of the contract and we're calling set message with um, a, a new message. Uh, hello from Hedera again. Um, so you can you can use this within your um, within your React app or code like this, uh, like this example to uh, to interact with a smart contract. As of yet, unfortunately, we don't have uh, libraries uh, like Web3.js or Ethers.js uh, that you may be used to if you're you know, coming from a, an Ethereum environment. We're working on creating some, uh, some more developer-friendly libraries for JavaScript and Java and so on. Uh, but right now, uh, the, you know, the SDK allows you to, um, to make calls um, and to get data back from a smart contract. Um, getting events is, is a bit harder. Uh, it's, I would say, I would argue it's almost impractical uh, right now if you, if you have events in your contract. Um, and um, the SDK supports uh, some, um, I'm trying to see here. Yeah, so this is getting the, the result of the contract and we're getting the, the first variable back, which is a string. Um, it, I can't, yeah, I can't, uh, I don't have context sensitive here. Um, 
there, there are some other methods, you know, for getting uh, an address or getting an integer and so on. Um, if you're having more complex types, you will probably have to use uh, a library like uh, Web3.js or Ethos.js and use um, some of the helper functions that they have to decode the response from a smart contract. Um, again, you know, if, if you run into any issues, uh, you know, uh, ping, uh, ping the team on, uh, on Discord and uh, somebody will come and help out. Okay. Um, so we have one more question from an anonymous individual that, uh, can we integrate the header hash graph and IPFS, that is the interplanetary file system, to mm -hmm. make it as a video streaming platform? This individual is trying to make a video streaming platform. So do you think this is possible and how may, how do we get started with this? Right, so uh, I presume you would use IPFS to store your video. Right. Um, and um, would the use case maybe that you pay, uh, I don't know, you make micropayments as you're viewing the video. Um, so every every minute of viewing or every second of viewing, uh, maybe you're you're paying some page bar to the the content creator. Um, so it's not so much integration between Hedera and IPFS here. This is more uh, down to your application. You know, leveraging the the capabilities of both platforms. Uh, you know, IPFS to store and retrieve a video, uh, and Hedera to effect maybe micropayments um, or using um, uh, tokens maybe to verify that you have access or the you know the right to access the video. Um, I mean, of course, the difficulty with something like IPFS is or not so much difficulty. Uh, is that the the video is public, right? It's on a public network. Anyone can download it and uh, and, and watch it. Um, so I'm not sure how you would you know validate or verify access to prevent somebody uh, who's not allowed uh, to to view the video, maybe with encryption. Um, but um, there's there's no real integration between the two. It, it's up to you, uh, as I said, to uh, to pick. The features from both platforms and then make them work together in in your application okay uh so we have one last question after this so all the participants over here uh after this what we're going to do is if you have specific project related questions uh regarding your projects so you can raise your hand and we'll try to unmute you so that you can ask greg directly about your doubts okay so before that one last question from power is that can we download and store smart contract receipts after execution with the client ID? So sorry, can we uh, download and store smart contract receipts after execution with client ID? Um, so um, yes. So when you uh, do 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 do. Uh, so um, here we're executing a transaction uh, or a function called set message with a message, and then we get the receipt. Um, the the receipt is a is an object in uh, in JavaScript or in Java. Uh, you know, if you want to extract some data from it and serialize it uh, to store it, of course you you can do so. Um, you know, that's up to you. Uh, the other thing to bear in mind is that um, if you look at, um, so we have also what we call mirror nodes. Um, so there are two, there's v2.kabuto uh, or v2.explorer.kabuto.sh. And there's also dragonglass.me. Uh, so these are visual uh, mirrors that also have uh, REST APIs. Um, so if you if you look at I mean this is my account ID on testnet and, and I'm on testnet here you can switch to mainnet to see what is going on on mainnet you can see all the the transactions that I've uh, I've performed um, and this transfer for example uh, from my account to 003 was the example that I ran in the uh, in the Java you know getting set up kind of kind of thing so uh, all of the transactions are persisted in these mirror nodes. Um, so you can also 
Uh, when you create a trans or when you run a transaction in Hedera, you get a transaction ID, which is uh, which is unique. Uh, you also get a consensus timestamp, which is unique. And then you can use the APIs to uh, pull uh, the um, the details of the transaction back from a mirror node uh, using the REST APIs. So maybe as an alternative to storing them locally, uh, if you store the transaction ID or the consensus timestamp uh, that you get back from from Hedera when you run a transaction, um, then you can you can maybe leverage the the mirror nodes and their APIs to uh, to to pull the details of the transaction. It's up to you. All right. So we conducted a poll during the meetup, which shows that about half the people are having trouble starting up. So if you guys have any questions regarding how to get started, what documents to refer to, uh, what SD, how, do, how you can get your hands on the SDKs, how to do it, we have a very comprehensive and very easy to understand documentation on doc, docsdocshederacom uh, slash guides. You can go to the guide and you can understand uh, every aspect of Hedera if you want to. Uh, but if you have any specific questions, now's the time you can raise your hands and uh, we'll then get on to individual uh, questions. If you have any. You can raise your hands and then uh, we'll try to uh, we'll try to unmute you and we can uh, you can directly ask your questions to Greg. Nikhil, in the meantime, we have another question from Jenkar. So yes. take a look at that. Oh, sorry. I totally missed that. Sorry, Jenkar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I'm not understanding the exact language here, but what would be the better thing? So basically he wants to ask is, uh, would it be a better thing that uh, we build a video streaming app using Hedera? I presume that this is the question. Please correct me, Jenkar, if I'm wrong in the chats. Greg, this, this one's for you. Yeah, um, so um, Hedera for video streaming app. So I, I think it, it, it depends on what you want to use Hedera for. Uh, like, like I said earlier, if the video is stored on IPFS um, and I happen to know the link, then I can download the video. Um, so maybe that's not a good, you know, a, a good point to start. Right. Um, but what you can do, and we have, uh, for example, um, uh, tune.fm, I guess that's in, in, uh, in entertainment. Um, so they're, um, they're connecting uh, music producers or um, uh, not so much the producers, but the artists themselves with the, uh, with the listeners. Uh, so what happens here is that Tune.fm is hosting the music on their servers. Uh, so it's not on IPFS, it's on, you know, it's on a, a Tune.fm server. Um, but when you, uh, when you play the music that they offer uh, through, uh, through their platform and through their player, um, the artist, or you're, you're automatically paying using Jam tokens. So they, they're using the Hedera token service uh, to create jam tokens, and those jam tokens are essentially um, so. Like now, you can see here. If you join, you get a hundred uh, tokens to start with for free. Um, and as you're listening to music on their platform, your tokens get transferred to the artist that you're listening to. Um, so, as it says here, you know, when the music gets played, the artist gets paid. Um, so here, they're using Hedera purely to enable micropayments. Uh, of uh, tokens uh, to the artist in a in an efficient and cost-effective manner, uh, but the music itself is not decentralized on IPFS. It's you know it's centralized on the TuneFM servers. Um, so you could consider a, you know a similar video streaming platform, uh, you know like a YouTube, uh, where you know instead of YouTube uh, collecting money from the people who use the platform or from the advertising agencies um, that, that advertise on the platform and then you know taking a cut for themselves that may be large or small and then ultimately paying the, the the video content creators or maybe only paying those that are really really successful because you know you you don't get paid for your your video that gets played once a week um, 
then you could envisage maybe something similar to Tune.fm where you create a token, you know, people join, they get some tokens for free or they buy the tokens uh, from you. And then as they're watching the video, their token balance gets decremented because they're now paying for, the, for watching the video in real time. Um, so how different is that to Netflix or, you know, Amazon Video or Apple TV or whatever? Uh, well, the difference here is that you're not buying a subscription, uh, you're paying as you're watching. So if you're a heavy user, okay, you will pay more per month uh, because you're watching many, many hours of video. Uh, if you're an occasional user, you know, you only pay for what you watch. Um, and the artist also gets paid or the producer of the video uh, or movie gets paid directly uh, rather than going through many, many uh, intermediaries. So maybe that's how I would conceptualize a video streaming platform, very similar to TuneFM. Uh, maybe not, maybe there are other ideas around, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's what comes to mind when, uh, when you talk about this use case. Yeah, it's, it's a very democratic way of uh, sharing videos, you know, uh, which is yeah, like well, a, it, I would say a much more democratic YouTube uh, alternative. You yes, know? indeed. And what it means is that small, uh, small artists who don't necessarily get, you know, uh, access to uh, production studios or to music producers who can have, you know, the Sonys and the Universals right. of this world um, have the ability to put themselves out. And we've seen this a lot on, on YouTube, uh, you know, where uh, new sensations, new stars have come out of nowhere uh, yeah. through YouTube and they're monetizing through YouTube. But YouTube is maybe, uh, you know, uh, collecting more revenue than than they should. Than the actual the artists, style, yeah. Yeah. Uh, or like I said, YouTube will not reward you with anything unless you have a million views per month. Or so um, it's possible, maybe through a platform, uh, an alternative platform, that even if your video is viewed once a month, you get paid two video tokens. It's not a lot, but at least you get paid something. Um, and uh, maybe the platform takes a small percentage because it has to operate and TuneFM takes a small percentage uh, for its operational costs, but you don't have anyone in between. You don't have, you know, the, the, the record label, the music producer and, you know, the artist manager and blah, 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 all taking their cut and ultimately the artist uh, not, uh, not getting much. Right. Uh, so we do have a question related to JavaScript, actually. Uh, yeah. Somebody uh, did ask about, so uh, they're saying that they're new in JavaScript. So mm -hmm. he's requesting, he or she is requesting that, can you please help them with the first step uh, in the JavaScript SDK in the documentation page? So if you right, can see. Okay. Uh, so uh, .sadera.com. Um... So getting started with JavaScript. Yeah, in the environment setup, yes. Yeah. Um, so, um, do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I guess there are, you know, there are some assumptions here that uh, you understand or you know a little bit about JavaScript already, uh, you know, having installed NPM. So you may need to go and find out how to install uh, NPM. Um, so if you Google, you know, uh, install NPM, you will find how to do this. Um, and this will create you a starter project uh, with, uh, with just a basic. So, uh, I mean, let's, uh, let's do this. Uh, so, dev, cd, github, right. um, So I happen to have, um, npm setup so if i do npm in it uh, it's asking me you know what do i want to call my project so lumos uh, js uh, blah 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 <laughs> um, and now i can uh, now in fact i've created it uh, yeah i've just created it here it doesn't matter it hasn't um, or has uh, yeah, so it's just created my my package .json. Um, so from here, I now need to um, actually let me Lumos JS package JSON Lumos JS. Okay, 
Um, now, if I go to uh, IntelliJ um, and I open my Lumos.js projects, there's the package JSON that we've just created with npm in it. Um, and this is now telling me to install uh, the Hedera SDK. So uh, if I run this command there, uh, so I can do this in IntelliJ. Um, I have access to my terminal here. I could do this in the terminal console as well. Um, this will now uh, download and install uh, the uh, 2013 SDK and will add it to my uh, package JSON which defines the, the properties of my project. So as you can see here, when I have these dependencies on Hashgraph SDK. Um, we're also installing .env. Uh, so just like the, the Java version, this enables us to pull um, information from a .env file. So this should have updated. There we go, we have .env. Um, now, you then add a .env file to your projects, uh, file.env. You put your account ID and private key from the portal. Um, and you'll notice, so um, this package JSON says that the, the main uh, file to run from is index.js. So we're going to create a new file, index.js. And just taking uh, this example code here, uh, we'll put that in the file. Um, and there we are, we've, we've started a, a JavaScript project, uh, which uh, in this case, um, you know, requires .env and this will load the contents of the .env file in memory. Uh, so we can then pull my account ID and my private key using process.env. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's the very basics for, for getting uh, that information. Um, and now we're going to uh, create a client. We want to use testnet. We're setting the operator to be the account ID and private key. Um, and then do, 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 do. Yeah, and then to create an account. Um, so we're adding some inputs. Uh, at the, the top here. So let me just grab those. Let's copy that, it'll be easier. So we've added private key, account create transaction, account balance query, and HBAR from the from the SDK. Um, and here we're generating new keys for the new accounts. And this is creating the transaction to create the accounts. So account create transaction using the public key that we've just created and putting a thousand tiny bars in the account. And then we get a receipt and from the receipts, we extract the resulting account ID. Uh, so this is using the response from the transaction, get receipts using the client. Um, so this will go to test that. We'll ask for the receipt for this transaction and then we get the account ID that, uh, that we've just created. So um, I, I'm, I would need to put my keys in the .env file in order to, to run this, uh, but essentially this is you know, step-by-step -step, uh, how you can go about creating a, a, a new project. Um, if you have, I, I guess, you know, if you need more, um, more detailed JavaScript uh, questions, um, I guess now is probably not the, the right time to do this, but uh, again, ask on, on Discord and uh, maybe other hackathon participants or, um, or, or others, uh, including myself and my team, will, uh, will help you out. Okay, uh, a quick follow up there by the same person, I guess, is, uh, is there any specific terminal that you have to use to download NPM uh, in it? I mean, NPM? No, not at all. This. Um, I'm I'm using iTerm here in my uh, on on my Mac, but you can uh, you can use uh, terminal, um, the the standard or command line. Uh, I mean, if you search for 
uh, installing npm, uh, assuming on Mac, but you can look on uh, um, on Windows as well. You know, npmjs.com um, will tell you uh, to do to do. Uh, downloading and installing. That's odd. That's the latest version. Right. So yeah, uh, nodejs.org. Uh, you can find the you know the installers for npm, and then once you've installed it, you can do the npm in it. Um, it it may be worth you know searching for uh, you know uh, something like getting started with uh, JavaScript, which will give you some more um, not necessarily a course, uh, but um, yeah, you know, getting some if if you've never worked much with JavaScript, uh, maybe just start with you know Hello World in JavaScript, uh, which hopefully will give you the the steps to download the right, you know, components, the right uh, development environments, and, and just getting set up with JavaScript in the first place. Um, and once you've done that, then you can move to our documentation, which assumes you're a JavaScript developer, um, and uh, and then move on to um, developing on, on Hedera using the SDKs. Right. Um, so we have another question. The video streaming question is quite popular. Saswit is asking, uh, what are necessary features should be in a video streaming uh, app, like payments with HBAR and all? I guess this is a very specific question. Yeah. Um, so um, I, I guess, I mean, what, what I'm thinking of, and, and really, you know, uh, my ideas should not be limiting, you know, uh, feel free to, to dream and invent, um, would be that uh, maybe you uh, you use HBAR um, and that's an option, but you could also create a token using the token service. Um, so the first feature would be maybe to be able to purchase some tokens. Uh, you know, and for the purpose of a hackathon, you can pretend that you know there is a money transfer. You don't necessarily have to worry about uh, integrating with you know PayPal or MoonPay or, or whatever else. Um, you know, just assume that there is a uh, uh, an actual money transaction happening. Um, so, you know, I come to your uh, to your web page or to your web app, um, I purchase some tokens, and then uh, now that I have some tokens, I'm able to play um, videos from your catalog of videos. Um, and um, maybe every every 10 seconds of play of a particular video, uh, then you're uh, transferring HBAR or HBAR gets transferred from or, or tokens, depending on which one you've chosen, uh, gets transferred from my account to the creator of the video. Um, so how do we get videos and creators on the platform? Well, maybe you need a page where as a video uh, creator, I can specify what my Hedera account is um, and I can upload a video uh, to to your to your platform um, so that it can be added to the catalog and you know which account to credit uh, tokens to whenever that, that video is playing. Um, I mean that would be maybe the basics and then you know um, maybe there's premium content that requires use of a golden token. Uh, maybe some videos, maybe the uh, the creator of the video can specify that playing his video or her video, is one token a minute and another, another could say it's 10 tokens a minute uh, so you can imagine a, an economy there where you know um, um, content creators determine the price uh, for playing their videos another thing that tune fm is doing with uh, their music or with the music is that you can use their platform to advertise yourself so here rather than being paid as an artist to for when people play your music, you're paying people to listen to your music. So you put a budget forward, you're saying, I'm giving, you know, I'm putting a hundred tokens uh, towards a marketing budget. And then, you know, whenever, when everybody uh, listens to my music for the very first time, 
uh, for every 10 seconds or every minute that they're listening to my music, um, I will pay them uh, one or two tokens. Um, and that, you know, that potentially creates demand for new uh, content uh, by people who don't know about this particular artist. Uh, and these people might eventually then listen to that music and pay for listening, um, you know, after being rewarded for trying it out. So, uh, yeah, you know, up to you uh, to, to think of ways of making it um, useful. Great. Awesome. So I'm going to take one last question before we end this session, and then I'll hand over to Susie to uh, conclude the session. So mm -hmm. this is from Vijaya. Uh, this is kind of a good question to end on note that uh, if what is the one step that if, uh, you will suggest me if I'm an absolute beginner? What is that one step should I take to get started with this world? So I'm assuming you're an absolute beginner in software development, uh, not necessarily Hedera. Uh, so if you're an absolute beginner in software development, um, I would I, I would do what I did earlier, which is to um, you know to look for an online uh, training course uh, or an online tutorial uh, to to help you get started uh, with software development. Um, although, you know, learning how to write software in the context of a hackathon is a pretty big ask. Um, I, I don't know if you guys are set up that way for, for this particular hackathon, but what I've seen in the past with others is that even though you're not necessarily a software developer, you may have a great idea. So there, there may be ways of setting up a team where, you know, you find a developer who maybe doesn't have that many ideas and you work together. So, you know, one, one creates the idea or brings the idea, the other one develop it, develops it. Uh, as the idea creator, you can test uh, what the developer has done uh, and you can work as a team and basically add your, uh, your skills and your capabilities uh, to, to make a, you know, a greater team than, uh, than one. Um, so that's, that's an option. Uh, now, if you are a software developer and you're new to Hedera, um, I, I mean, I, I would strongly suggest that you, you look at the documentation. Um, if you want to skip the documentation, uh, go to our GitHub, um, take um, one, you know, the SDK that, uh, or the language uh, that works for you, whether it's Golang, uh, JavaScript or Java. Um, and if you go to JavaScript, for example, um, same with Java, same with Golang, you can go to the examples and then you can say, okay, how do I create an account? And here's an example for creating an account. Um, and, you know, try it out, you know, um, play with it and, you know, change it a bit, look at different options. Um, and then maybe you want to um, do, 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 uh, create some tokens. So, you know, have a look at transfer tokens and this will show you how to create a, a new token, uh, how to associate with a token, how to do KYC uh, and so on and so forth. So um, if you're an existing developer and you don't really know, um, you know how to get started with Hedera, look at the docs and look at the SDK examples for, for inspiration um, and then make it your own. Great. Uh, uh, and also I should say, um, uh, sorry, uh, hedera.com slash blog, I think. Um, we have some uh, blogs by our, um, those of you who were on the kickoff call, uh, Ed uh, was with me. Um, so Ed is one of our developer evangelists, and he's putting some great blogs together on, on how to get started. And these are kind of video tutorials, uh, as well as text. Um, so uh, you can see here how to get started with Hedera token service, uh, which is a three part blog. Um, so, you know, by all means, have a, have a look at those. Um, and, um, yeah, any questions, uh, we're on Discord. I think this is, this is a, uh, this is a good note to end this, uh, Q&A session. So I'll hand over, uh, the reins to Susanna to continue with the proceedings. Oh, sorry, before you do, uh, thank you everybody for taking the time to listen to me. And I hope I've answered your questions fully. Thanks. Have a good weekend. Thanks for joining us. Uh
but uh, before you drop off, it, I, I would just like to ask, would you have time for one more question? It looks like Saswat is asking uh, about how to implement one HPAR per minute feature. Could you suggest a way? Okay, uh, so you can't do that in Hedera itself. Uh, you, you have to do this within the application that you're building. Uh, so maybe, you know, while the video is playing, you have, you know, depending on the language that you're using, uh, you have a countdown timer that, you know, makes a, a transfer transaction for an amount of tokens or HBAR every time the timer ends. And then you restart the timer and, you know, you start another 10 seconds. Uh, so this is not something you can do in Hedera itself. It is something that you have to write and use the Hedera APIs to, to make the payments. Thank you, Greg. That was a great session and um, uh, we're really uh, excited to see what you guys are building and we're looking for your submissions. So before we close, I'd also like to put in a, a, a small reminder. So uh, the deadline for submissions is coming up on the 5th of December and uh, we expect all of your projects to be submitted in by then. And for the first 15 projects that submit uh, um, before the deadline, you basically, uh, uh, the entire team gets an exclusive NFT from Hedera, which would, uh, which you can use uh, for various purposes. So uh, make sure you do submit your um, projects on time. And if you do have any questions, any support that you require from us, feel free to join the Discord server or the Telegram channel and uh, we'll be there to help you out. Uh, so thanks everyone for the questions and uh, thank you, Greg, for making this such a uh, educational session. And thanks, Nikhil, for uh, taking the questions as well. So yeah, thank you both. Thank you all. Have a good evening, everybody. Mm -hmm.